This statue of a little girl named Heta Perez stands in a place of prominence at the beginning of the exhibition, Journey to the Beyond. It dates to the 5th dynasty, and Heta Perez was a real person who lived at some point around 2500 to 2400 BCE. Statues like this of the deceased could serve several purposes, especially as physical substitutes for the deceased's body or as a vessel for her soul. One of the most important ritual uses of statues in ancient Egyptian tombs was as a focus for the mortuary cult. Mortuary priests, relatives, and visitors who entered a tomb were expected to interact with a statue or another image of the deceased persons buried there. The tomb's architecture and decoration were designed to visually guide visitors to approach a statue. Otherwise, there could be a special niche shaped like a door carved into one wall of the tomb, which held an image of the deceased person above it. A table was often set before the statue or the door. Visitors were expected to lay some food on the table as a courteous gesture to the deceased person. And when building their tombs, ancient Egyptians also set up foundations of land as payment to employ mortuary priests to bring offerings of food, drink, or incense to the tombs and to lay them on this table for years and years after their death. To the ancient Egyptians, statues were objects that could serve as a substitute for the body of a person. This idea underlies many magical practices and rituals in which statues were used. For the mortuary cults, statues placed in a tomb were especially important as vessels into which one of the deceased person's souls the Ka soul could be channeled. Mortuary priests could magically call down the person's Ka soul by reciting an offering ritual recorded for us in the ancient Egyptian coffin texts. This calls the Ka soul to come down to a place where it can receive the offerings made for it on the offering table. The positioning of statues in tombs directly in front of the offering table therefore shows the exact moment of the Ka's arrival that this offering ritual is meant to magically bring about. In this statue, Hedda Perez is being depicted as a girl who is pre-adolescent in age. Her status as a child is apparent because she is depicted being naked, holding her finger to her mouth. These were conventional symbols commonly used to convey childhood in ancient Egyptian art. Her left shoulder is positioned so that her arm would have been held outward horizontally to her side, indicating that she was once holding onto the leg of another larger figure in a gesture indicating support and her subordination to that figure. This is an important clue to the larger context for this statue. Now, statues of children like this did not typically stand by themselves in ancient Egyptian tombs as the focus of a mortuary cult. Tombs were usually built for adults, who had achieved some level of social prominence in their lives, and children were depicted in them customarily as a complement to the tomb owner as, for example, members of their family. And that was the case with the statue of Heta Perez tomb. In 1936, the Egyptologist John Cooney figured out that this girl was originally part of a larger statue of a group of five people, representing Heta Perez's family. The other four family members from the same statue are now part of collections in museums in Worcester, Brooklyn, New York City, and Kansas City. John Cooney was further able to link this statue with a set of feet and a statue base found in a tomb in Giza in 1930 by the Egyptologist Salim Hassan. Someone probably once found that statue intact in the 19th century and broke it apart in order to sell it for more money as separate pieces, after which point each individual piece coincidentally made its way into an American collection. The statue base fortunately gives the names of all of the family members depicted. For example, we learn that the name of Hedda Perry's brother and her father was both Rawer, and Hedda Perry's was apparently named after her paternal grandmother, who was also called Heta Perez. The girl's father, Rawer, is a well-known person from Egypt's fifth dynasty. 
He is perhaps most famous for having a unique biographical text that was discovered in his tomb. This describes how King Nefer-Irkare accidentally struck Raware with his scepter in the course of a festival procession. And because of the king's ritual power in that moment, this accident apparently posed a danger to Raware, so much so that the king then had to stop everything and cure Raware magically on the spot. Additionally, the king then ordered a permanent record of the incident to be made, a copy of which was the one found in his tomb. An exceptional feature of the tomb of Raware is that it has a large number of statue chambers, over 25, many of which are hidden behind walls. Hidden statue chambers are features found exclusively in tombs from Egypt's Old Kingdom. Egyptologists call them serdabs, using an Egyptian Arabic word for cellar or basement. Serdabs in the tomb of Raware and elsewhere sometimes have statues inside of them, like that of the group with Hedab Heres, representing the tomb owner and other family members. Also, they may include diminutive statues of people at work, representing perhaps servants of their family. The statue base of the family group of Rawer and Hedab Heres is an extremely important discovery for this tomb. No other statue or inscription indicates the relationship of this family so well and there is no other representation of his daughter, Hedda Heres, known to exist.